It's a lie. It's that time again. It's the Berkey and the Badger Board Game Battle Show. It's going to get wild. It's going to get wacky. It might even get a little zany. We're going to talk about board games in the board game industry. And, you know, we might talk about anything else we want to talk about. Ha <laughs> ha ha! We are live again on the Berkey and Badger Board Game Battle Show. I want to welcome my co-host, Sir B -b 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 Barry the Badger. Hey, hey, good man. Oh, yes. Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello, all Hello. the way from England. No, England yes, friends. yes, of course. Uh, yes, uh, stop by for a spot of tea and crumpets. Yes, eh? <laughs> Right, and welcome to the show, Mr. Dick Van Dyke. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? I am. I'm feeling. I'm feeling very fatigued with baby syndrome. Ah, player number four, keeping yep, you up at night. Yep, yep. Keeping up at night. Keeping up during the day. Oh, it's it's hard work. It's hard work being a daddy again. Oh, I bet. We have my grandson Philip is here today. My daughter Hannah's helping me with some graphics work and different things today, and uh, he's here. And uh, what a joy! I just I could sit and just play with them all day long if I had time. Now hopefully, he doesn't walk in and behind you and say, "I done a poopy, Grandpa." <laughs> <laughs> well, he he's only fourteen months, so he's 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 just making lots of noises and lots of poop. He does lots oh. of poop. Yeah, I, I know that. In the past two hours, I've changed three nappies. Oh, boy. I think that's what the smells give me, the headache. I don't know. It's <laughs> the ammonia. The glasses on. So what is your, what is your, yeah, it's a protector, eye protector. So what kind of diapers, what is your brand name diaper in France? That's a very good question, which I, I would love it. to, yeah, I would love to answer that one. But you don't know, because um, you don't buy them, do you? Firstly, I'd like to answer that in two ways. I want to do it first in my normal voice, and then in second way, I want to do it in a high-pitched kind of wail. Um, <laughs> I don't know what they mark they are because my wife buys them, takes them out of the packets, and then stacks them up ready on the shelf. So when you change them, you just go, Poof! It's like It's like a garage. There's like white there, nappies there baby there you just go <laughs> assembly line <laughs> diaper and then yeah yeah it's, it's like an oil change it's, it's, yeah. it's done okay <laughs> now i answer that in my squeaky voice yes so that's what mark of nappies i know it's pampers in england we use some pampers but i don't know what they are here yeah. Pampers are pampers. big here too. Pampers and loves. Yeah, I think you get pampers here as well. Yes, you do get pampers here as well in France. But um, and you get pampered. Uh, you get pampered in France too. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, with flowers and in chocolates, Cheese, and, cheeses and champagnes yes. Yes, and yes. wines. <laughs> Oh. Uh, and yes, yes, you get pampered. And if you say an insult, you get battered with the baguette. That's the way. <laughs> I've been hit with a baguette. <laughs> <laughs> We're going way off subject again. Yeah, this we are. Hey, Kabuki Kid is here. How are you, kiddo? Oh. I'm this fine, thank you. How are you? <laughs> uh, she's a blast. It's so fun to have her on the show. Well, I suppose we might as well just get into it because we have a ton of things to cover on the Berkey and Badger episode 45. Do you believe that? Episode 45 oh, called... God. TableCon! Only taken us two years to get here. Oh, sorry, TableCon! I'm supposed to echo that, and I TableCon! 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 Con! 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start out our segment with the mailbag. What's been in the post? Do you have oh. something come to you in the post? I had a Kickstarter prototype come to me in the post, and I've I done a, a review of this Kickstarter. This Kickstarter is called Cover Me, and I need to find the graphic. Okay. I'll edit this out. 
of the audio podcast. Yeah, because we do an audio podcast as well. This is an audio podcast show, and uh, what will happen is the very interesting parts will go into the audio podcast, and all the non-interesting parts will be edited out, much like this. <laughs> so, yes, up on Kickstarter at the moment is a game called Cover Me. Uh, by Jumping Turtle Games, which is a, a very original theme. It's about fashion and fashion magazines. Players are editors of uh, fashion magazines, and every month they're going to be choosing a cover girl to go on the front of their magazine. And hopefully their traits will encourage the public in, in the areas of fashion. So the traits are like the hair color, the hair length, the dress color, and the dress pattern. It would depend the on- The top hat? The yeah, type of hat? That's a very hat. nice hat. But the, 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 the uh, dresses will depend on uh, what season it is. If it's a winter or fall, um, it's gonna be the dress, dress pattern, which is very important. Whereas in the summer and the spring, it's gonna be the dress color that's important. And so everybody's magazine will be revealed at the same time. And all the models, all their statistics will be transferred over to the public. And so if there's three blonde models and one brunette model, the scale for blondes will go up by three and the scale for brunettes will go up by one. So blonde is a, you know, the fashion. After three <laughs> months, um, there will be a tally that you look at these traits and see who is uh, what are the the highest value so if blondes are still high um blonde models are popular and if you um if the length of your hair is long as well and long hair is popular and if the color of the dress is red say for example if all three of those traits are the most popular traits and you have a model which has all three of those traits you're going to score points for that model or if you don't you don't score any models at all and then you go to the next part of the, the round. The game goes on for three years, so you're gonna be putting out 12 models a year, and every year there's gonna be a new color introduced, a new color dress, and these color dresses are, they give you higher points as you go on. So you're, you are practically kind of dictating, you're trying to influence, sorry, the public in what the fashion is, and hopefully have a model which has all the traits of what the fashion is, and those will win you the points. Um, it's very interesting ideas. It's a card game, it's a light, simple card game, very family orientated. Um, and so I've been playing that, and I've been, as I said, there is a, um, it's running up on Kickstarter now, so if you want to, that interests you, go check it out. You can see my video review there as well. Um, it's very colorful. It uses real models for the art, which is really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what came in the post. A game called Cover Me. And we will be back after these commercial breaks. <laughs> Ah, oh, dearie me. We've lost Berkey. He's gone. He's gone. We've lost his signal. So I'm going to have to entertain you all on my own. <laughs> Let me just send him a message to say, hello, Berkey. Come here. Come to the show. What's his name? His name is Batman. Yes, I've been watching a lot of Batman. Lego Batman, that is. You know, the one where... Oh dear, he lost the internet. Pewter, Pewter, find Berkey. We gotta get this man back and fight crime. Uh oh. <laughs> so while I'm waiting for Berkey to come, I'm gonna carry on doing Batman voices. Just like this. Because, you know, I am Batman. Yes, we've been having arguments. We've been having arguments. I know this one's on the <sighs> okay, that's a good question, Kabuki. Thank you for asking that. Yes, the Seventh Continent is shipping out to people now. I should have had my copy now, but I, I put it back due to the fact that I've been out of the country for a bit visiting family. Um, have I been getting any feedback about the, the music that I've done for it? No, not much. Um, there was a little bit of feedback on the Kickstarter site saying, wow, this is really interesting. And again, I've, I've read a few comments on um, um, Board Game Geek. But the really annoying thing 
is there's been quite there's been a few videos put out and in the background there's some music but it's not my music and i'm like no <laughs> this music's free but um you know people are not putting it in their videos <laughs> but i'll talk more about that in a minute kabuki okay hey 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 i think i'm back you think you're not sure I'm not sure. Can you see me? I can see you. You like it? Can you hear me? I can hear you. So but, sorry. Well, I missed out on all that goodness because that sounded kind of cool about all the fashion stuff, right? Yeah, but go watch my video. There you go. You've caught up. Cool. Cool. I'll <laughs> do that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. That's what happens when you live out in rural America in Minnesota. Hey, I got something cool in the post. I got my fantasy coins came in. You got fantasy, some more? Yeah, fantasy coins LLC. Back these on Kickstarter. Uh, they, I, I gotta say, they, this company they don't communicate well. They take forever to get, but they are the best coins I've ever seen in my life. Mm. Uh, look at this thing. Oh, how, you see that well? Mm, for you, podcast listeners, the resolution is really poor. Yeah. <laughs> Ber Berkey has a little hamster behind him who generates the electricity that generates the, the Wi-Fi. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. We can't oh, see anything. Kabuki, tell awesome. him you can't see anything. But you can't see that? I can see it on my view. Okay. Oh, man. Let's, let's, go, let's go big screen. Let's go wide screen. Batman screen. Try that. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, baby. WB that, Berkey? That sounds like a boat. That yeah, like it is a boat. <laughs> well, I, I just got to say, these fantasy <laughs> coins are, are the best. I wonder if I could change my, my resolution. We're going to lose him. We're going to be no. sad. He's gone again. Yeah, and I'm I'm hooked hooked directly to my dealy too. So so Jubes, is it is it fuzzy or fizzy? I can't make out what you've written. <laughs> or you've written both. You've it's written fuzzy. <laughs> it's fuzzy. Yeah, uh, it doesn't let me change that here. Oh, yeah. wow. All right. Well, we'll just have to make do. Sorry, guys. I'll give a detailed description of these. Wonderful well, points. I mean, I've got points, some. The thing about them is, is they are so thick and they're so meaty. Um, this particular uh, uh, galleon, it's got this great big ship, old sailing ship with this huge roping that's right around it. And and it's heavy. I mean, they're, they're just amazing. Um, I, I can't say enough about the quality of the Fantasy Coins LLC. You know, they do a lot of Kickstarters. And uh, like I say, they take a long time to get here, and it always seems like there's one thing after another. But long and short of it, they put out some awesome coins. These here are these these different shape coins. I've got the Egyptian set. set. I have a, a set of Viking ones. I have a set of Greek ones, uh, and they are. And I got the new atomic ones, which mm -hmm. are kind of cool that you could play with. You know, like uh, what's that? What's that game? Uh, I. Uh, I know what it is. Ah! Manhattan Project. All right. So that kind of stuff, and and uh, they have steampunk coins. My my feudal Japan coins are probably the my favorite ones of of all of theirs. So those are fantastic. And then I got one other thing in the post. I got my hat. Wait for it. No, I I did get that in the post too. <laughs> Game toppers. My dot. My my Kickstarter came in from Gray Fox Games, the champions of Midgard expansion. <gasps> There's an expansion. Ah, it has the mountains expansion, and you got you can go on these quests in the mountains, and you've got these berserkers you got to go after uh, instead of going on the ocean seafaring, getting those monsters. But then it has the Valhalla expansion, and I have to say, I don't think I'm ever going to play Champions of Midgard without the Valhalla expansion. Uh, it is it's a module, so you can kind of take or pick and choose. But um, mountains is great too. I like it. But the Valhalla, when you lose your Viking dice, 
you actually get these little little uh, chits that represent that you've lost them and then you can store those up and as you get enough of those you can get these extra cards that will either give you end game scoring or they might give you an immediate advantage for your next battle or something like that and so you're not when you go on a battle and you lose your dice and you don't get that objective you don't get that monster that you really wanted to match your set well you don't feel like you've totally lost and so anyway this this Valhalla expansion is fantastic i must say it takes a long time to set up on the board Ah, there is a potload of stuff. They they were brilliant though when they did their Kickstarter. Part of the stretch goal, one of their their rewards was that uh, that they were making a larger, thicker box. And so it's this really cool box where all of the game fits in there. My only problem is I had this really cool insert from Robert Searing. <gasps> An insert here. Love it. Now we oh. love Robert, and he we does do. such a great job. And you know, I, I I need to get an upgrade to my upgrade my champions of Midgard. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I I had to really finagle it to get it back in there. But anyway, finagle, finagle. That sounds like something you eat. Finagle plus. No, okay. that's snagle plus. Snagle plus finagle. <laughs> finagle and, and jam. No. <laughs> Well, anyway, the, the Champions of Midgard, super, super fantastic. I love that game, and uh, it, it was a great, great time. So that was really cool, getting that stuff in the post. Mm -hmm. So should we um, – did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about in the post? Well, there's nothing else in the post apart from a few bills, um, you know, and and lots of publicity. That's one thing that's very popular here in France is publicity. You get lots of – like flyers from magazines, you know, come to our supermarket. We've got this, this on promo, and and I look at the board game section, and it's oh look, Monopoly. Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of that too. I've been getting a ton of stuff in the mail because we've been getting our our game mats and components for the game toppers and all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But uh, did you talk about your seventh con continent soundtrack while I was off there? We did a little bit with Kabuki, but we I'm going to edit that out. So we're going to talk about it now. Yeah. Tell, tell us, Barry, just a little bit more about what's happening. I know you've been doing some fantastic soundtracks uh, that you've been working with. Different companies have, have engaged with you to create these thematic sound backdrops. So tell us a little bit about uh, Seventh Continent and what you did with that. Okay, Seventh Continent, for those of you uh, unaware, is a Kickstarter which is being delivered as we talk. There are people that have got it in Australia already for about a week and a half now, and they've been playing it. Um, and it's basically a kind of like a choose your own adventure game, where but it's, it's done with cards, and you can play multiple players. You can have up to four players, or you could play solo, and you each take on a character, and you're exploring this continent which you've mysteriously woken up on. You've already discovered it many uh, year back, but you've you, in a dream, you've come back, and you, you've been cursed, and so you're going to be exploring, and you're going to be making decisions on um, where, which direction you're going to go. Um, you're going to be looking for clues for how to cure yourself from the curse that you, you've developed, and um, it's it's just a, a very it's a very long game apparently because it's a very large continent and you're going to be exploring all over trying to find clues to point you in the right direction. As I said, to find the remedy to your curse or curses because you can interject many curses, um, which will have you going all over the map trying to save yourself. And you're coming up with ideas and you're trying to, you know, survive basically. So yeah, I was approached by um, Bruno for the soundtrack because they were going to do a soundtrack. It was one of the stretch goals um, from the Kickstarter. And unfortunately, okay. at the last minute, the composer they had had to drop out for personal reasons. So I get a message from Bruno because I just interviewed him at Essen and he was saying, you know, uh, you know, because I interviewed him and I talked about this soundtrack, which I all of a sudden found out about. And he goes, oh, yeah, do you know anybody? And I said, yeah, I know a few people. There's this guy called um, Benjamin Loomis who does Sirenscape. Fantastic site. You know, check him out. Um, I pointed out Tabletop Audio. Um, and then I said, yeah, I do music as well. 
He said, do you? <laughs> well, send me the, send me his stuff. So I sent him some stuff because I'd actually done last night, which is a, a zombie soundtrack for for the zombie games or for yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you. And um, he got back to me. He said, "Yeah, I want you to have a go." And he's like, "Okay, fine. How long have I got?" He said, four months." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> so what do you want? He goes, "Okay, I want ten tracks, um, which we can put on loop." for each of the areas in the game. I was like, okay, and how long do you want these tracks? And he said, five minutes each. I was like, what? You want a piece of music, which is five minutes long, which is gonna be on loop, and you're gonna be playing this in the background while playing a game. I said, no, you want it longer. You want it about 30 minutes. I said, and he said, that might be a bit too long. I said, but that'd be better. We came to a compromise, so we said around 10, 15 minutes. So, um, yeah, I got to work. I slugged away. I had to, my deadline was in March. I was like, bang, 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 banged out with these little compositions, back and forth with uh, Bruno and, you know, the ideas that he had. Because, again, I haven't played the whole game. I've only played the um, tutorial island. So I had an idea of how the tutorial island should sound. So I created this tutorial island track, and it sounded brilliant. And then I had to do these nine other tracks, not knowing what's going on in these worlds. But luckily, Bruno was able to, you know, point, give me some clues of like, there's this tribe here in the swamp, or there's these strange creatures here in the cave, or and so, so I was able to kind of get the you could kind of get the emotion of each each set, if you will. Yeah, yeah, I kind of got, picked up the vibe of what each area had, and he pointed out a few of the cards that would, you know, be traps or something. So um, that gave me some ideas, like for pitfalls. So I got some rock slide sounds, and I, um, again, the, the weird creatures. What kind of creatures would be there? You know, there were there was a case of you know, the swamp shouldn't be the same swamp all the time. So I, I did a progression from day to night, and then back to day, the, which would then loop. Um, because if you've got the same sound going over and over and again, it's a bit, bit, bit boring. How um, long does the game take to play? Well, <laughs> that's, that's the question that I, I keep forgetting. Ah, it, the game is probably about 100 hours, I think they say. Oh, wow. But how many, how many, how, how, what's a normal play session? Well, people have been reporting to play for about one or two hours. Yeah, they, they, yeah, the game length can last for anything from five minutes to 1,000 minutes. They've got on Board Game Geek. Um, I would agree that with five minutes because the, the first time I played it, yeah, I, I went through the deck pretty quickly and uh, exhausted my, my team and, and they all died. <laughs> but um, once you know the game and how it works and how the mechanisms work, you can slowly you know, trundle through the forests and through the jungles and through the swamps in the mountains, um, keeping your, your team alive with searching for food and um, being aware of traps and poison and, and other things. So, uh, it's, Kabuki Kid says, can you save your state so you can play as long as you want? Exactly Campaign that. Style? Exactly that. It's Where it's a card game, it has this really intricate save system. So basically... Uh, to save, all your characters need to be in the same space because you can all go off in different directions. But if you come back to the same card, you save that card and you put it in this special deck of cards. And all the equipment that you have, you put into separate slots um, and all the um, areas that you've explored, but the events have changed. We're going to a discard section of the box, so you will never touch them again. So they are, it's kind of like legacy style in that way. Mm -hmm. the, those cards stay out of the game for the rest of the game because you might have gone to a location, seen a monster, killed that monster, and so that monster is no longer there, so you remove that card, but you'll have another card in replace of that thing. Or you might have seen the monster and the monster scared you away, and so that monster stays there, so that card stays in the deck. So um, the save system is very, very simple. You can save the game in about two minutes and then to reset the game up, it's two minutes. Everything's very, very simple. You just go bang, 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 done. And you're playing again. 
unfortunately, you have to start exploring the continent again. You start off with that one space and then you start to explore and go through the fog of war. But um, that, that's the fun of the game, I think, as well, because things will change. Um, and again, you know, that's what happens in a dream. You sleep. I'm not saying yeah, that at the end of the game, this game is a dream. All right. <laughs> Kabuki Kid says that that should be shipping soon to the U.S. She backed it and ha hasn't gotten it yet, but you said they've gotten it in Australia already? Yeah, that's right, and they seem to be enjoying it. It's got an 8.6 on Bulgengi at the moment. Yeah, it's been taking a while to get here, though. It's That's a while ago that it uh, finished, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. They, they were supposed to have it out in March, and that's what my deadline was for the soundtrack, to have it up on done and ready so they could put it on the site. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So now it's done. You can go to the seventh continent dot com serious pulp and uh you can download my soundtrack there for free. Or you can always go to board games everybody should dot com and I put the soundtrack up there in my music section and you can listen to it for free and download it for free. C D baby as well. It's totally free. And then you can use oh, it for whatever fantastic. games you want. So do they, they offer it on their website as well? Yep, that was the plan. Okay. So you get the game, go right to their website, download it, or you can go to your site and pick it up? Yep. And again, you don't need to use it just for the Seventh Continent. There are tracks that you can use. I've used the Cave one while playing Descent. I've used... Um, what other game did I play recently? Um, I can't remember what game did I play recently. I was in the jungle. Oh, Tobago. Play Tobago in the jungle soundtrack. It works. <laughs> jungle love. So, Driving yeah. me crazy. Okay. Not that one. No. No. So there. Like there you go. <laughs> the seventh continent soundtrack. Well, and congratulations, Barry. I'm so happy for you and glad that you're getting that kind of notoriety with these companies. I know you've done some stuff also with uh, with the Conan and and batman now too right yeah that's true with monolith with monolith mm -hmm. who so are, that's pretty exciting. yeah they are they are expanding um i'll go back to the seventh continent for a sec because that if you missed out on the seventh continent they are doing a, another kickstarter to do the seventh continent so if you missed out you can redo it um don't ask me about what stretch goals there are and what you're going to be missing out on or what you're going to be getting extra um, but um, just look out for that very, very soon. I think in the next couple of months. That's fantastic. Kabuki Kid says she's excited to, to play it with your music, so that's fantastic. Well, so let's move on to our segment, uh, Things That Make You Go Hmm. So my, 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 my Seventh Continent soundtrack didn't make you go hmm. Yeah, that did. Things that make us go hmm. Board Game News. Berkey and Badger reflect on the current events that are happening in the board game industry. Some may be good, some may be bad. But there are all things that make us go, hmm. <laughs> the night is short and we don't have much time. Well, I just have one quick thing so we can move right along here. But um, the thing that made me go, hmm, my new segment is the fact that most people know this, but Gen Con sold out. We're getting ready to go to Gen Con 2017 in Indianapolis, Indiana here in just Woo! a few days. Woohoo! But I got to tell you, 75,000 people is what the capacity was. And I know there's fire codes. Uh, they opened up the Lucas Oil Stadium uh, to uh, house the True Dungeon. I've even uh, been, uh, understand that they've moved the games room uh, to Lucas Oil Stadium. And if that's the case, that was a brilliant move. You know, this is Gen Con's 50th anniversary. So it's a big whoop de doo um, if I if I remember right, I saw that they are having uh, uh, Def Leppard, I believe, open up at some. <sighs> I, I believe so. I, I, maybe I'm wrong about that. I saw something about it. Maybe it was spam. I don't know. In a world 
in love, I'm in love. Yeah, oh yeah. I got this feeling. In do I kind of look like? Do I kind of look like Sorry. Slash? You do. My hat. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's got to go down more like that, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, shame you cut your hair as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's uh, I mean, Gen Con, I tell you, it's, it's, uh, it's a spectacle. You know, this 75,000 thing, it's crazy. Uh, it's chaotic, but, boy, I still get excited. You know, I, it, it's probably my least favorite of the things to do because of the chaos, but there's some key things that just blow my mind. Uh, that I just love to do. Our annual meat sweats happens. <laughs> and I see Blue Peg, Pink Peg has joined us. Oh, just in time for jerky. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll have lots of pocket jerky, backpack, it, backpack jerky, and happy mouth spices. We're going to have that all along. But we go to Fogo de Cows, and, I mean, it's it's like, I mean, they just keep bringing you a skewers of meat. I mean, it's it's the meat sweats. You just... You, you, it's like hollow out a leg and fill it up. Just fill it up with meat. You know, and, and you know, if you go outside, they've got this vomitorium just off to the side. You can go over there and then have at it. You know, it's like Roman. It's like Roman times, you know. Yeah, and you've got togas on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, it's so much fun getting together with that whole crew. Uh, you know, Rob and Patrick. And um, I'm not sure if Jeremy's going to be there this year or not. I hope to see Jeremy. Um, Christina, I think, is coming. And uh, it's just going to be fantastic. So, yeah, Rob's here from Blue Peg, Pink Peg. Yeah. So that's be, fantastic. Must be the hat that's terrifying. <laughs> well, it's going to be a good time. And, uh, it's going to be busy. It's going to be chaotic, but we're going to have a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more in a little bit about game toppers coming to Gen Con. But that's something that I'm putting a whole lot of energy into. So I'm I'm really flying high, getting ready to go. So that's the thing that made me go home. Seventy five thousand, totally full. We'll see how it goes. So you're flying high like a like a rocket. High, fly like an eagle. No, I was doing I was doing Def Leppard song. Oh, well, <laughs> well it. Yeah. Get it in my love. <laughs> Kabuki's asking me if the trailer's loaded and uh, it'll be loaded Saturday. Okay. Yeah, we got about thirty tables that'll be loaded up. And two packets of spicy beef meat. Couple. Yeah, yeah we put them in our socks. <laughs> okay. So what's been making me go home? Yeah, um, what? what? Uh, oh, the, the thing that's been making me go home is the thing. Um, recently just seen that there is a a thing based on the film, The Thing, where it's yeah. who goes there, who is, which is based on The Thing. No, The Thing is based on Who Goes There, which is a novel way back in the old days. Um, there is a game called Who Goes There, which is a game about The Thing. And if you know what The Thing is, Tune off. It's a thingy. It's a thing. It's a monster. It's an alien from another planet. It's the film from John Carpenter I'm talking about. This is the second game that I've seen with the theme, The Thing. That was a bit of a mouthful. Luckily, I said it very, very slowly. Because <laughs> I'm Batman. I say things slowly. Um, and this made me go, hmm, it's like, wow, this is a great theme. And they got a great idea. They had some fantastic art. And I looked at the game and I thought, yeah, it's just a kind of, I don't know, dead of winter card game. Yeah, and um, that made me go, hmm, that there's, there'd probably be another game called The Thing. And it also got me thinking about all these other games which are coming out, like there's a Terminator game and there's a, there, of course, there's the Evil Dead game. And I'm thinking, oh, God, Hollywood's picking itself dry and now board game companies are picking Hollywood dry. Um, and people seem to be uh, backing these Kickstarters because they are their their, their favourite films. And, you know, as, as we've seen in the past, not all of these games are great, like the Labyrinth one. Um, it looks great, and you get a nice kind of picture of Ludo, well, a statuette of Ludo. And you get, Ludo! Ludo! Smell bad! It smelled bad! 
<laughs> I know well, Lance Meister, the Undead Viking, he's crazy excited because he loves everything the thing. I mean, he loves all the different variations of the movies. I think he loves the oldest one the best. So the original. Oh wow. Yeah, the original. Oh, cool. Yeah. And yeah, so jobs jobs, they live is your favorite John Carpenter film. Well, there it is. You owe me a check. <laughs> they live is a great film, but so shall we just move right on into the good, yeah. the not so bad, and the ugly? Yeah, yeah, I think we should because I came here to chew gum and 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 talk board games, and I'm all out of gum. That's not the one. There you go. So good. Not so bad. Not so bad. Not so bad. And the ugly. He was ugly. Ugly. Oh, I totally forgot about the graphics. Ugly. Well, you've got the memes right there. This is TableCon meme season. So, yeah, we're doing lots of shilling here. Yep, yep, you know it. So go ahead, Barry, explain our memes to us. What's the uh, good? I don't know. I haven't had a look at it. I downloaded it, and I didn't even look at it. How poor of a guy I am. We that's are professional ugly. here. Yeah. That's a that's the ugly. Yeah, sorry. That's ugly. It's, it's good cutting the, off. Is this the good? Is this the good? This There's is the, the good. good. Yes, we have a picture of one of Kevin's table toppers with a, a nice kind of insert in the middle. And on the table is king of tokyo and the actual characters are talking this is so cool this is like disney all over again <laughs> <laughs> gigasaur says me like game topper <laughs> yeah and the king is saying thank you oh thank you oh, thank you very much uh, it took me a, took me a split second to figure out that the king was elvis oh <laughs> yeah, subliminal. It is subliminal. So if that's the good, that's the good. So the not is, so bad. They're not so bad. Oh, we're on uh, Star Wars Armada. Yes, we are. That's what it is. They're cut off a little bit there in that picture, but oh dear. but we can see a nice can holder there. It's holding a can of zero something. I don't know what that is. Zero flower yeah, bugs. Arizona. Ice tea. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, well, that's oh, supposed to be. A, a, it's a great big uh, destroyer there. And he says, You <laughs> rebel scum. But then you got Tanta 4 saying, can Smell your foul stench across this table. <laughs> <laughs> oh dearie me it's a trap. no that's not so bad it's a trap it's not <laughs> it's a trap it's a trap <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the ugly we have king domino on the table and i cannot read sorry it's 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 off the chart it's off the it's, it's off the hook it's off the chart it, it it says does this does this color make me look fat <laughs> Yes. Just take a towel already. <laughs> Just take your towel. That's ugly. Yeah, that, it isn't even funny, but no. Hey. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. It is what it is, and we are what we are. There's a <laughs> star man waiting in the sky. Star man's a good film. Jeff Bridges. So, <laughs> so what have you been playing, Barry? Give me a okay. little clue. I'll give you a clue. Right. See if you guys can guess as well on the forums see what game that I've played, and then see if I liked it or not. Okay, this first game that I'm going to talk about, I totally forgot which one I was going to talk about, because I've got four games to talk about, but I can only talk about two of them. Yes, yes. Okay, in this game is a card game, and these cards are made up of bricks, which you are going to use Egyptian style to make a pyramid. You're going to be making a pyramid of these cards. And again, gravity takes its toll. You have to start by placing bricks on the bottom and then you'll place bricks on top. And these bricks have different colors. And to get points in this game, you need to make roots of the colors. So these colored 
the same colored bricks need to be touching each other. And so if you've got a chain of four blues, you get four points. If you get a chain of six reds, you get six points. Um, also, this is an Egyptian game. You're going to be putting some of these cards into a tomb. Um, and you're ah. going to be also using some of these cards to build a obelisk. Um, each of the cards, as I said, have all these colored bricks on them, but some of them have special icons on them, which you can use uh, to get bonus points. Like if there's a pyramid icon on a card, if you put it into the pyramid, you get bonus points. If it's got a tomb icon on it, you get bonus points if it's in your tomb. And if it's got an oh. obelisk, it's, it's an obelisk bonus point score. Um, in the game, Players will be taking turns at choosing which order they wish to pick cards from because you're drafting cards from the middle. And with each position, there are different places that you can put the cards. So if you want to be first and you take the first player marker, the only card that you can place is one into your pyramid. If you take the second player, you can place a card in your pyramid and in your tomb. If you take the third player, you can place a card in your pyramid and on your obelisk. If you're the fourth player, you can place a card. You have to place a card into your pyramid, but you can choose whether it's in the two or in the obelisk. And if you're the fifth player, you can place a card in all three of them. This game no goes game. on until every player has built a pyramid, which is every time you're playing around, everybody's placing the card into the pyramid. Once this is done, you're going to score, as I said, roots of uh, colors, bricks in your in your um, pyramid and then the tomb which gets points for your tomb thingies and then again you get a color pattern i think in the obelisk as well huh well i and thought it was something else. else you thought it was something but else no, i was thinking it was valley of the kings okay so that, did that, that doesn't kid. have obelisks in it so yeah you thought it was yeah but no it's not it's not that at all do, do, do any other I, don't I, I don't know if I've heard about this one. It sounds no. sounds good. It's it's this year, so you'll probably see it at Gen Con. Okay. What is it? It is. Let's go to the screen share. Ding! Pyramids from Yellow. Oh, from Yellow. Yeah, as I said, it's a card game, family style kind of card game. Um, very easy to play, very easy to pick up, simple rules, and it was it was fairly light. It, as it says there, 13 minutes to play, I'd say a bit longer, uh, I'd say about 40 minutes. But um, it's a nice kind of, you know, uh, drafting game, you're drafting from a pool in the middle. As I said, the, everybody's going to be choosing what, what turn they want to go to, to pull cards from the middle, and depending on that turn order, would determine where they can place their cards. You're always going to be placing a card on your pyramid, but you can get to place cards on your tomb and your obelisk as well. Um, very light, kind of light as carcass on, let's say, um, but quite enjoyable. Um, it's again, I wouldn't mind playing again. Um, it's not the greatest game. I don't. I think after a while it might start to get a bit boring. Um, but um, uh, yeah, it pays up to five players. I think it's, it, it's, it looks like a nice small box card game, which I think is going to do pretty well for itself. And that's Pyramids by Yellow. Oh, that sounds, sounds good, actually. I probably would like to try that. I think that, that came out now a little while ago, right? I mean, that's been released a bit. Like like in December or January, February? Uh, possibly. Possibly. I do not know. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. It came out in January. Yeah, I'm going to talk about a couple of games that Yellow is coming out with at Gen Con in a little bit here. That wasn't one of them. One of the games that I've been playing, it's a trick-taking game. All right? Now, of course, our, our good, not so bad and ugly. This is our first impressions. Uh, we may have played it more than one time. However, this is not a detailed review when we go into our first impressions. It's basically just what we're doing. So I need to rate what you think this game was. So I'm going to say, Barry, that you said it was not so bad. Um, yeah, I would say it's not so bad. Sorry, I've <laughs> I kind of gave it away in a way, I think. 
Yeah, I kind of thought you did, but I figured we're yeah. gonna set that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so bad game. Uh, as I said, it's a game that I, I, I would like to play again, but uh, I can't see it lasting very long. Sounds good. Well, one of the games I've been playing is a trick-taking game. And uh, a little bit of a clue, the cards are like these larger tarot-sized uh, cards. Um, this game has a lot of theme, and it's a trick-taking game. Mm -hmm. Okay? Special player abilities. Uh, it, I would say that it, it has a lot of take that in the trick-taking uh, with these special abilities. However... Everybody is doing that, take that mechanism. So it's not, um, I had the opportunity to play this game at Dice Tower Con with Sam Healy and the Oren, Robert Oren and his family, Janice and Mike. Um, this this game can play up to six, I believe. The Oren. Um, it's just come out this year by a very popular company. Um, it typically is going to take you about 45 minutes. It took us a, over an hour. Uh, we had had a lot of player interaction. This is probably one of the most significant player interaction uh, uh, trick-taking games that I've played. Kabuki was saying it was Fox in the Forest, but that's a two-player. This is up to three to six players. So you have any clues about that, Barry? It's got to be by the, 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 the legendary Mike Fitzgerald, doesn't it? Ah, good. He's fantastic uh, card game designer. Absolutely love Mike Fitzgerald, but no. Ooh, okay. And when you said the Orin, I immediately had a, had a strange flash. I saw this film in my head called Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin. <laughs> <laughs> the Legend of Orin. The Legend of Orin. Have you not seen it? It's a film. It's an animation way back in the end of the 80s, I think. And it was in 3D. And it was a, kind of like a Star Wars ripoff. There was like a Han Solo character, a Luke character. There was a female R2 detail. R2 detail. Up, first of all. Yeah. I was really enjoyable. I want to watch that film again now because you said the Orin. legend of Orin. We should make a sound drop for Robert Orin's channel. The yeah. legend of Orin. Yeah, Star Chaser, Paint Chaser. They call him Paint Chaser. <laughs> um, no, I haven't got a foggy as what your game is. Sorry. Well, this is a game from Wiz Kids. Just came out. Um, this, uh, for full disclosure, was actually sent to me as a review copy. Um, and I was able to take it with me to Dice Tower Con. I knew Sam Healy had played this game. And so basically what you're doing is you, you've got these set of cards. I'll show you them on the camera here that you can see. There are different types of cards. And then you're also going to be a character. So, for instance, I could be King Arthur. Ooh. Sorry. I can also, I could have been Merlin. And these give you all special asymmetrical type of powers. But then there are other cards that you can add to where you have your apprentice with. For instance, King Arthur here says, uh, let me put on my glasses because I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. I'll tell you the name here in a second. You're probably starting to pick up on it just a little bit. But it says uh, you may add three to the value of any sword weapon card that you play. And what's interesting about this is the lowest card is going to be taking the trick. And so there's a lot of different mechanisms, and you can switch that with other cards. Um, and you've got alchemy cards. You've got deception cards. You've got swords. And, and they range all the way up to 15. Um, and then you actually, when you take tricks, you're going to lose health points by these cards here, the feeble the robust, stable, and crippled. And eventually, you know, if you lose all your points, you're going to go out of the game. And this game is called Tournament at Camelot. And I'm giving you a very brief overview, just giving you a little bit of information about the game. But what do you think I think about that, Barry? As you can see, I put my glasses on as well, not because I'm old, but because it makes me look a tiny bit more intelligent. It does make you look intelligent. <laughs> very pro professorial. Very professorial. Okay, you like these types of games, so I'm going to say that you, 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 you think it's good because I know that you like all of uh, the legendary Mike Fitzgerald's 
trick-taking games and of course his super legendary baseball highlights 1957 1957 oh no 2045 baseball yes, highlights first mention that's the chicken <laughs> so yeah i think you think it's uh, good well you're right hey. it's it's i would actually say this is probably becoming one of my favorite uh trick-taking games that I've played. The reason that it's so good is it, it has that gamery type of thing with the asymmetrical player powers, with the ability to change some things up. Um, when you're going through each one of these rounds, um, it's going to change up from round to round. But what's so great about it is there is so much player interaction. Yeah. You know, if someone is starting to lose their health, people are going to start going towards the other person. Um, you can kind of kind of work with each other in a sense too. And um, I love trick taking games. And you know, it's it's kind of funny because some people didn't grow up playing trick taking games, so it's not the, quite their thing. Yeah. But anybody that grew up playing whist and canasta and and some of these type of games, hearts and spades, um, these are these are in our wheelhouse. And this just puts a little twist on it. Having the Arthurian th uh, theme attached to it is really cool. Um, big cards, which are the really nice quality. Um, I just, I think this really should be talked about a lot more, to be honest with you, because WizKids did a fantastic job uh, on this game, and it just creates those moments that we all want when we're gaming. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sam Healy loves this game from the Dice Tower, and our whole game group there, and, and Janice, I mean, she is a hoot to play games with. <laughs> And uh, we just had a blast, and Sam's wife was there playing with us too, and it, it's just big, big, big fun. You've heard it first. Sam Healy thought it's great. So you don't need to go watch his video. You just need to go out and buy it. There you go. Simple. Yeah, you don't even have to. But he did make a very good video on how to play this game, by the way. Uh, Sam Healy at the Dice Tower, so congrats. Yeah, Kabuki likes Trick taking as well. So do I. No, she doesn't like it. She oh, says she it really. It. She goes. Yeah, it really does seem like you almost need to have grown up with trick taking games to enjoy them. Yeah, like I said, I played it. My first only, first one only a couple years back, and they don't grab me. So well, you need to play a trick taking game with me, like Tournament of Camelot, Kabuki Kid, because See? it will grab you. I guarantee you. Yeah, my glasses make me look intelligent, but they they don't make me read properly. I not read properly, sir. I, I, I look at words in the same thing. I need to read like what this and like this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh. up and down. You got to look through two different deals. Okay, the big deal. It's no good. We'll All right, good. so what's your next game there, buddy? My next pal? game is, see if you can guess this one. Players are adventurers, and they are racing across a continent to get to a finish line. There are different. There is different terrain on these module boards that you'll put out a track, and okay. uh, you'll be using cards to get across these terrains. There'll be uh, jungle cards. There'll be field cards. There'll be uh, river card. Sorry, lake cards. Um, and these cards that you'll be playing, uh, once you've played them, they go into a discard pile. Once you've played all your cards uh, from your deck you're going to be taking this discard pile and shuffling and enjoying some more. Um, the good thing is some of these cards come with money on them, so you can go and buy some other cards from a pool, much like a game called Dominion. So this is a deck building game uh, where you're Indiana Jones racing across a jungle to try and get to the end. Huh. And these are cards that are going down. Yes. So if you want to traverse two pieces of terrain of grassland, you need to play two grassland cards. If you want to traverse uh, a four-space uh, lake, you're going to need four canoeists cards. Hmm. Well, the only one I could, yeah, that it, it's not Lewis and Clark. Um, no, I guess I don't know what it would be. Tell me. You said Lewis and Clark. Sorry, I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Let's go to our audience. Our audience members do not have a clue because they're talking about cribbage, you know. <laughs> cribbage is awesome. I'm telling you, cribbage is awesome. 
I heard. I mean, I, I played. We used to play for fifty cents for, for with my grandpa, and we we would play cribbage till the cows came home. Cribbage yeah. and whiskey rummy. <laughs> I wish I knew I'd play cribbage and bridge and all that stuff. Oh, the game I was talking about is the quest oh. for El Dorado. Oh, of course, this is a Spiels de Jaris nominee, right? Yes, it is, and uh, it's it's there. You can see it. So we don't have it over here yet. That's why it's it, it that that's a problem with the Spiel stuff. We don't even know what half these games are when the game came out. We oh, didn't even know what the game was. <laughs> Do you hear that? You hear that? That's a, that's a violin being played by a mouse who doesn't give a rat bottom. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't even have it here in France, but my friend got a copy from Germany. We played the German version, um, and obviously all the cards Could you read were it? German. Hmm? Could you read it? No, the, the, most of the iconography is quite easy to understand. There is some text on there, but the iconography does kind of like go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's simple. That that means money. That's a Raven, that, Ravensburger game, right? That's a, a Burger Raven, yeah. Yeah, Burger Raven. <laughs> yeah, burger Raven. Burger. I like burgers. I like any kind of burgers. But you know what I really like with burgers? I um, like to put Happy Mouse Spice on it. But the way you make a burger is you make two burgers. Then you put cheese in the middle. Then you put bacon on it because everything's better with bacon. But then, ah, then you make onion rings and you put onion rings on top of it. Then you do something else really special. You uh -huh. fry an egg and you put the egg on it. No, 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 oh, no. baby, that's no, how you eat a burger, baby. No, no. How you eat a burger is you put it in a frying pan no. and you just dump a bucket load of Happy Mouth on it and turn it over. Okay. Kind of. And, yeah, kind of. and then you put it on your plate. It is gorgeous. You know what? My wife made mussels. She cooked mussels in white mussels? wine. Mussels? Yeah. White How'd wine, you... onions, and happy mouth spice. Mwah! Gorgeous. It was good. It was good. So we happy had... mouth really blends great on seafood. It really does. Yes, I almost tried it on chicken today. I was feeling experimental, but I thought, no, no, no. I'm going to put, I'm gonna put honey and lemon. It's lunchtime right now, isn't it? <laughs> you know, my kids' favorite meal, What they let, their favorite meal is our grilled salmon recipe. Yeah. We are so far off the track, but who cares? Grilled salmon, you take a great big fillet of salmon, okay? And you, you grill it skin side down. Generously sprinkle happy mouth all over it, and then some fresh lemon zest. Cook it for about five minutes till that skin is just charred. Flip it over and peel the skin off. I know gourmet people like to leave the skin on. I don't like the skin on there. <laughs> so you take it off. My kids, this is their favorite meal that I make on the grill for them. And it, it's so tender. You hardly have to cook it on the other side. And I have a video of it at happymouth.net if you want to go see it. But, um, yeah, let's go have some lunch here. Let's finish up real quick. I'm yeah, okay. <laughs> so what do you think I think about El Dorado? <laughs> El Dorado. What are we talking about? Yeah, um, I, I give Happy Mouth Grilled Salmon a good rating. Yes, yes. Love it. It's a fantastic game. Um, I played uh, Flam Rouge, you know, the bike game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I played that a couple of days before. And I found it meh. Uh, but I played this afterwards. I thought this is the same thing, but it's better. It's better. It's almost like Salmon Run. It's really, really fun. I, I don't know. It's just real fun feeling when I play the game. The only drawback that I have about it is it looks pants. The graphic, the graphic design looks like it's from the 80s and 90s. It's horrible. Although the iconography, as I said, is very simplistic and everything stands out. But yeah, it looks horrible, dated, and uh, yeah, yeah. That's my only criticism, but it's a fantastic game. It's so fun, you know. Daring people to go up to mountains to get these tokens, which give them like a special power, um, and then try and then blocking someone. You know, you can see that they haven't got any um, forest cards in their hand, and you're in the one forest space. Otherwise, they'll go round uh, you with you know, uh, water or something, and it's like, 
<laughs> and some, <laughs> some of these spaces, you need more than one, a value of one. Normally you need a value of one, you know, jungle to get through a, a, this jungle space. Some of them have two or three or four on them. And so it's like you, you're buying cards um, to put into your deck and you have to be really careful. You have to think, well, what's, what's my route going to be? Am I going to need this card later on? And then there's the, that uncertainty that the cards that you draw are the ones that you need right now. So do you go all the way round using the cards that you got, or do you wait there? So, uh, yeah, it's a great game. Really enjoyable. One, definitely one from my collection, even though it's ugly. I've heard good things about it, so it'll be fun. I wonder who's bringing it over to the United States. Probably Ravensburg. We get Raven Burger games here. We're talking about yeah, I have a few of them too. I'm just wondering who distributes. I, they well, yeah. They yeah, usually don't have a, a booth at Gen Con, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Any of you guys out there on the chat remember who who brings Raven's Burger to the United States? Yeah, and Kabuki saying that the Australians put eggs on their pizzas. Ugh. Oh, I could go for an egg pizza. Yeah, um, I know that the French they put. They, the, the French put potatoes and creme fraiche on their pizzas. Ugh, that's not a pizza. No, that that's a that's a that's well, a tough that, yeah, Well, you you know we have Alfredo sauce pizzas here, so that's kind of like that. All right. Yeah, that's good. I could go for a pizza too. Like a, hamburger, a double cheeseburger hamburger pizza. All oh, right. With fried <laughs> eggs. Ben Steeler said, would I replace hair and tortoise? Ooh. What, with El Dorado? Yes. Because um, hair and tortoise is like um, 80 days around the world. And that's a nice race game. It's a very, very good one. But I, I like the deck building aspect a lot better. And if you like deck building, um, you're not going to get like a massive deck. But this game just, just felt right. The right amount of time, the right amount of challenge. Very quick, very fun. Chicken Alfredo. <laughs> Stop it. Excuse me. Well, yes. I have another another one uh, that I've been playing, and I picked this up at Dice Tower Con, okay? Mm -hmm. um, this is a big honking box. I mean, this is like a big honking box. Outlet. It's a thick box, and it's a big box. The uh, Zyre Legends of Dress System. No, but it's about like that. It'll even maybe a little bigger. Twilight um, and in one. It is, this particular company is noted for these cubes that go in a special device. Can you name the device? Oh, yes. Yeah, dice tower? Wait for it's it. It's a cube tower. Ah, it's a cube tower. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. You're right on track there. Uh, this company always produces, you know, a lot of, uh, in this particular uh, mechanism, uh, they've been very highly regarded. Uh, they put out a lot, of, a lot of good games. I mean, uh, in this, in this you, it's an area control game. Mm -hmm. And you have a light side of the map and a dark side. <laughs> It's not Star Wars. I was going to say, Star Wars, the Shogun trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you guess the manufacturer? It's, it sounds like the Queen. Publisher. It sounds like Queen. You're correct. It's Queen Games. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they've taken the theme of Shogun and Wallenstein, and they've turned it into a light side, dark side, um, something or other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably not explaining that probably quite like you're hearing it, but yes. No. You, okay. You have any idea? It's a new offering from Queen. It's a new offering from Queen. If I knew what Queen were offering, apart from Galileo, 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 Figaro. Galileo. Yes, this is uh, by the publishers uh, Dirk Hen, who produced Shogun, and Mike Elliott. Oh, I like Mike Elliott. Well... Then he, I think he likes you too. I've heard yeah. that. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Oh, Thunderstone. Oh, yeah. he, he told me at lunch here when we were somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a poor boy really. with, with no family. 
I'm going to tell him about you, though, and I'm going to tell him to text you and say that you like you. I like you. I like Thunderstone. He likes you. Oh, no, he, he, I want him to say, I like you, but not to me. You found me somebody to love you. Found me somebody to love, love. We're in Queen Man. <laughs> Queen Man. Uh, Kabuki Kid got, has it right. This game is the new game from Queen Games called Immortals. Who wants to live forever? <laughs> <laughs> well, Immortals. Who wants uh, to live this, forever? This, this game is a big honking box of cardboard. Um, it has some of the nicest player boards that I've seen. If you look at this here, you're going to see these Honk. two player boards that come together as like a, a jigsaw. Honk. And They're big and honking. There are different races. So like here is the Amazons, for instance. This here is the Necromancers. Okay. You've got the elves. We've got the dwarves. But you notice that here, there's the 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 white wing on there. That's representing the light side. On the other side, you have this kind of dark dragon bat-like wing, and that's the dark side. This here is for the necromancers. So you can live and let die. Sorry, that's the wrong thing. Live and let die. That is actually wing. Um, and likewise, on the game mat, you have, have, have all these different countries that are in these different zones. And uh, you are going to have some that are on the light side and some that are on the dark side. And you're going to be able to put your reinforcements on different sides, depending on these cards that you're going to draw. And there are cards that are stronger, stronger territory cards uh, than other cards. So tell me, um, um, before I get into it anymore, just what do you think I think about this? All right. I know that you like Shogun, which uses that, that dice cube tower mechanic. I love, in I adore Shogun. I okay. adore Shogun. And it's area control. Um, I think you like area control because a lot of the games that you've talked about in the past have been area control, like the Star Wars Rebellion, which I think is area control, where you're looking for... You're, You're trying to find the base, but yeah, a little bit of area control, but yeah. yeah. I grew up on area control. You're right. Yeah. And again, it sounds interesting because it looks like um, old uh, Elliot, Elliot Gould. Elliot Gould? I'm no. Just, I've just insulted someone. Over. Elliot, phone home. Yeah. Phone. Mike Elliot. Mike Elliot. He loves you, by the way. Yeah, he, he told me that me. one time. Yeah, he does. Hey, don't stop me now. I'm having such a good time. Come on. Um, <laughs> um, um, I, I, it looks like those, those big pieces that join together mean that you can connect and, you know, that's this kind of thing is fantasy, you know, mishmash, connect things together. So I think you're going to think this is good. Well, um, I've only had the chance uh, to play this twice. and <laughs> That's more than me. <laughs> and and I want to play this game a bunch more. Um, I'm I'm waffling on it between good and not so bad, to be honest, because I was such a huge fan of Shogun. I knew that this wasn't going to quite be Shogun, um, but I haven't quite wrapped my head around going from the dark side to the to the. You still have the to the light side, so you've got light on the one side, you've got dark on the other. When you get these cards. Um, what happens is you're going to place them out in your tableau in front of you, and those are going to be your actions. And just like, kind of like in Shogun, where you're going to be able to put troops here, or you're going to be able to go and move or do a move here. They one thing that's really cool is they have these portals that you can get and that you can transfer from one side to the other side. Um, one thing that I'm struggling with with the game is that you can actually, if somebody takes your territory on the other side, basically, they can take one of your cards because as soon as you lose a territory, you have to give them back that territory. Well, if that was one of my key actions, I lose that card. And I, in essence, losing that action. And that, I don't like that. That's the one thing I don't like. Um, and, and, but I, I, we've worked this through several times with my son and he's going, no, no, no. 
He said, that's intentional. That's a design element. And, and so you have to circumvent that on how you're placing your troops from the dark side to the light side, because they're going to transition where you can't do anything over on the dark. And all of a sudden you're going to be over on the light, for instance. And so there's this kind of back and forth type of thing. Um, I enjoyed my play of it both times. I'm going to, I'm going to actually say just because of the pedigree of Mike Elliott and Dirk Hearn, uh, uh, or Han, I mean, uh, because of the cube tower is fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. The production quality of this game is remarkable. Um, and I've enjoyed every play of it uh, so far. And so I'm just going to, as a first impression, I'm going to say good. Okay. Um, that could change. You know, that, that one element I'm still struggling with. And I probably need to play it more and, and figure out. I don't like it when a game takes something away from you that you were planning and it screws up your whole turn. Mm, and it's a bit like that in Shogun, though. You know, if you lost a territory, you had to give that card to the other player. And if you got attacked by multiple players on the same turn, you could lose a lot of cards. And then you were, you were, you were limited on actions and things that you can do. And that, that bugged me. Yeah, I, I, it just handles it a little bit differently in, in this game, the way that, that works. But, um, yeah, that, that's the one thing that I'm, I'm, I'm still working through. But um, a great production. I think we, Queen Date Games did a really nice job bringing another big box to market. So. Okay, so they're a, they're a killer queen. Killer queen. <laughs> I want to ride my bicycle. <laughs> Oh, dearie me, there need never more. Fat bottom girls, you make the rocky we world go. We are the immortals, my, my friends. friends. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move right into. Hey, we want to thank our sponsor, Arcane Wonders, for sponsoring the Berkey and Badgers board game babble show. Arcane Wonders, fine makers of the Dice Tower Essential Games. Of course, they got a huge lineup, Sheriff of Nottingham. And at Gen Con this year, they've got the new expansion for Sheriff of Nottingham. Merry Men. This is going to be a big deal. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. They also have the new hit game viral from the dice tower essential line uh, viral has been getting a lot of good good press with the production uh, the theme of the game how it plays it's very unique tom vassal of course is recommending this game and this is going to be a big feature for arcane wonders at gen con uh, so, uh, also, of course, we have Spoils of War that has been released at Origins and is getting a ton of buzz. Uh, Spoils of War has been doing really well. So we want to thank our, our sponsor, Arcane Wonders, and we'll talk a little bit more about them uh, in our topic, in our battle topic. But that's our great sponsor. Go to arcanewonders.com. And with that, we are going to move right into our babble topic. Button. The babble. 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 Well, Barry, you're going to start us out on why we called this episode Table Con? Okay. Yes, here. In the middle of Babylon, we have lots of people talking about wonderful things. And one of the things that they've been talking about is this table con thing. This table con has been set up by this wonderful person called Mr. Kevin Burkhardsmeyer. Actually, it's not table con. It's actually game toppers. And because Mr. Burke over there is going to Gen Con and he's taking his wonderful new product with him and he has the chance, well, he's had the chance to meet lots of publishers and editors who want his tables and they want to display their games on his tables because they have this professional kind of finish to them. And that's what everyone's been saying in Babylon anyway. I don't know if it's true or not because... Babylon is is in the, in the common marketplace, and we live in the castle, don't we? Yes, <laughs> uh, because because I am the great meister, the the, the meister Pisces. Yes, 
it's 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 great here. Look at look at look at that table there. That table's got some <laughs> it. It, it looks like a queen, but it's not a queen. It's actually a queen game, and that is the mortals. And yes, it's very very big. Look at all those tokens and a cup holder. It has a cup holder. Yes, Kevin. Well, that, can you that... tell me what got you started on this <laughs> game topper thingy, Juby Jobby? Well, thank you, Barry. Thank you for asking me that question. <laughs> <laughs> you look like the Wizard of Oz. Thank you. Oh. Don't look at the man behind the curtain. No, you just need a cloak to put a question in. Dun, 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 and a curly mustache. <laughs> you dare question the great Oz? No, no, no. You're more like Dick Dastardly than the great Oz. <laughs> oh, I think you're right. I think you're, see, I'm, I'm what they call a living logo. I mean, you can see my, you can see that hat. See, it's a living logo. Oh yeah, baby! <gasps> wow, game toppers, top hat. So well, where did game toppers you, come from? Basically, what happened about you know five years ago, getting really immersed in the hobby and so forth. Eventually, starting to do some media and, and different things like that. But um, I designed a, a big game table, and my dad built it for me. It's an outdoor rustic themed game. You've seen it on our videos at Board Game Theater. Uh, there's actually a video of how that that uh, was actually produced right at BoardGameTheater.com. <coughs> Excuse me. That was easy for me to say. So. What happened is I decided, uh, you know, you, when, when you play on a high-quality gaming uh, table, you just have this amazing experience. And we couldn't wait to go play games on the table. You didn't want to play on the kitchen table anymore. Well, so I decided to make a portable version. So when I went up to my daughter's home up in Alexandria, both my son-in-laws, and we drive up there an hour, and I made this prototype. And it was basically just a... A, a base floor with with it and I got some neoprene mats that I could throw on it and it was okay um, It was too heavy. It didn't quite work right And so I started thinking more and more about it and, I, and then having a modular rail system where you could get the cup holders in there and Accessory trays and different things like that. Well long and short of that. We worked through that for a couple years and all of a sudden I came up with something that I thought would work started asking industry insiders um, what they thought about it and the response was overwhelming like yeah why hasn't somebody thought of that <laughs> well that began the process my dad and I made two really high quality oak uh, prototypes the problem with wood though is it's in order wooden. to do it's wooden that's the problem it burns yeah, it burns, it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the <laughs> ring of fire. Musical yeah. This is the musical musical episode. Flash, so, you flash. Uh, well, basically, the problem with wood, too, is that you can't manage your tolerances really well because of humidity, because of different types of wood, because of uh, craftsmanship. You really have to have skilled craftsmen, and it costs a lot to manufacture. That's why these game tables that are being made. I have great respect for all these companies that are doing a great job bringing these beautiful tables. But you know, you're spending three, four thousand dollars minimum generally. Um, gen some of these tables were, were twenty and thirty thousand dollars. It's crazy. Well, most of us don't live there where we, we we've got two or three or four thousand dollars discretionary income, and we might not have a space that we can have a, a full gaming table. So the design was designed to, or to bring portable gaming to your own kitchen, dining room table, but make it really affordable. And we were able to do that by engineering an aluminum rail system. This is an extruded piece of aluminum. I worked with uh, some engineers from a local manufacturer that I actually used to know when I ran my, my computer company. And we started the process. It took about eight months to get it right. Uh, you would not believe the amount of work and the amount of gyrations and drawings that we went through to make sure this worked perfectly. And but allows us to incorporate really high quality wood features. We have a top wooden rail. We have wood corner blocks, wooden accessories. This here is a wooden cup holder, for instance. And this fits right inside of this rail system. And what's beautiful about these is you can put these anywhere around the table. 
So if you're playing a two-player game, four-player game, six-player, you just put them right where you want to go. Okay, we've got a question. Ben Steeler yeah. is asking about uh, what about the storage? How do you how do you store these games or games? How do you store the tables or uh, what can you store in them? Can you store anything in them? Yeah, good point. Um, the 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 game has its own. Uh, if I'm understanding the question, Ben, are you wondering what we store the game topper in after you've played on it, or are you wanting storage within it while you're playing on it? I think I think he's probably going. What do you? How do you store it? Um, and we have solved that problem. Um, uh, Sir Job says, my plan is to build our shelves so we can slide it in behind the shelf, slide in. Yeah, good point. Um, we actually have a big foam bag that that is all nylon with heavy foam in between, and there's a center uh, piece of fabric, and both sides zip down, and you can put both halves of the table in there, zip it up, throw it in the car, throw it in the closet, slide it under the bed, put it behind your game shelf. Exactly. Exactly. So that's one of the storage solutions. And we have four different tables, but what's really cool about these tables, they come in two halves. So they're fairly lightweight. They're about 30 pounds each. And you set it on the table, they both come together. There's a little connector block that goes right in between the rail. You tighten the two screws, it virtually becomes one piece. And because the floor of the table, it's slightly elevated from the floor of the table that allows us to put cross struts underneath the game floor, which makes it very solid, very stout, but it also creates a large friction footprint. And what I mean by that is we have this 3M engineered material. It's an adhesive that's like a 3M rubber, and that goes underneath. So what it does is it protects your tabletop. You can have high quality game, regular table. This won't scratch it or mar it. I was really careful about that. And then secondly, it creates a place where this table just doesn't move. Uh, we've put these on the, those plastic six foot lifetime tables. You put it on there and you move the table before you move the topper. <laughs> so you put them under pressure. Ding, ding, exactly. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Well, and there's enough weight going on there that, you know, that's overall it's about 70 pounds and so that it really creates a nice stable footprint. But basically you turn your own dining kitchen table or one of those plastic folding tables, you turn it into a high quality gaming solution at a fraction of the cost. Um, you know, a lot of these, like we were saying, these tables are three, four thousand dollars. We're going to have tables coming to Kickstarter this September, starting at three hundred ninety-nine dollars for our mini, and and we're going to have all kinds of packages. But one of the other things we're doing that's crazy fun, you can you can find out more about this, so I don't belabor it too long. I know we're spending a lot on this episode because we're getting ready to launch. I hope you guys forgive me for being super excited and passionate about this because it's it's been a year in the works of bringing this to market. But I really wanted to do something awesome, really want to do something great, quality, and yet being affordable where I could help upgrade people's gaming experience. And uh, you can go to GameToppersLLC.com, GameToppersLLC.com. You can see videos. Robert Oren did this beautiful video uh, showing how the table works and we did a question and answer session and that type of thing um, Shows how the component trays, you know, I just got this in I don't know if you can let me see if I can show you this real quick uh, but, 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 but. This makes for good radio, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah Because all uh, we can all we hear is radio gaga radio Google <laughs> This is our double component tray right here. Okay. Boom. Boom. And what's really cool about this, this has a spot where you have two cup holders, but we've made all of them where they're multifunctional. So when I do it like this, we have this little piece that Ben from Daedalus Productions has been helping me. This is a wood and cork inlay that goes in there. That fits on top of it. So you can use this now as a component tray for your hidden goods, things like that. Look at this. We've got our iPad sitting on here and our phone and some dice. Uh, we also have a place where Robert Searing, he made this uh, little tray where you can have all your components, your hidden goods. And what's nice, rather than having all these cutouts in the top of your rail, 
now you've got them below the rail so they can be hidden and then you can still put your arms comfortably on the rail so that's some things one of the things that we're also doing is thematic game mats we have some awesome game mats we have a dungeon crawl map um, we uh, really went out on this stuff. I hired Andreas Zifferatilis, that he's from Greece. I think I did Patrick Kelly proud there by pronouncing it. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Sir Job says the mini is at three ninety nine. Does that mean that the full size is double? No, it's actually just a fraction more higher. Uh, we're going to have stuff starting at five hundred dollars. So. Very affordable, high quality, but uh, a lot of options. These thematic game mats that Andreas did. He did all the Mage Wars art, and he did Android Netrunner, and has worked on Arkham Horror. I mean, the guy's amazing. Uh, he did this dungeon crawl map that is just gorgeous. He did uh, uh, a castle theme mat. He did an adventure theme mat. I don't know if you can see this here. This is the adventure theme mat that is very close to hmm did i lock up again you've locked up okay here we oops try this did you switch it off and on again <laughs> i just did oh i saw um, a flash uh, you see it no Okay, well, there you go. Um, let me see if this is too big. Yeah, that's probably too big. Um, we also, uh, we have a space field map that's amazing, but we also hired Brent Chumley. I don't know if you know this guy. He's a fantastic artist as well. He did Doomtown Reloaded. He's done a lot of magic and different things. I have a actually a Texas Hold'em map that he did for us. Take a look at this. See if that bad boy. We are frozen. Let it well, go. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. When I try to do the, the graphic overlay there, it's causing problems. Now the king is over there too, huh? <laughs> well, anyway... The point is we're going to have some amazing accessories. We're working with Ben from Daedalus. We'll have some other companies that are going to have contributions to these trays that are going to be like DM vaults and all kinds of cool components. Going to be very affordable coming to Kickstarter in September. You're going to hear a ton about it. But one of the things that you're going to really see is that at Gen Con, we have a bunch of quality publishers that are going to have our game toppers in their booth. So you'll actually be able to, if you're going to Gen Con, you'll actually be able to demo games on these tables. Can you tell us what booths are demoing your table as long as, as well as their games? I'm so glad you asked me that question. Are you? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you're such a good setter upper. Uh, anyway, the wind blows. <laughs> no, it's it's actually really exciting because it was at the Gamma Trade Show that I started talking to publishers about my idea. I had just a little quick video that I made showing them my prototype. And, and when I went to them, they overwhelmingly said, this is brilliant. This is great. Uh, in one instance, I was talking to Stefan Brichard uh, from Yellow Games, and I'm so grateful that I got to meet him and, and, and introduce myself to him. He, he looked at my video and he paused it on my iPad and he goes, I want one of these right now. <laughs> uh, so there was this enthusiasm. I was so grateful for that. But long and short of that, Yellow Games has purchased these tables for their show booth. And you, they're going to be demoing some of their top new games. I'm going to go through the list of the different publishers so you all know what's happening at Gen Con. So this is kind of a, a, a back and forth. But the reason we're talking about this we are having a huge giveaway. We are actually going to give away a game topper system, and we're calling oh. it the Scotland Yard Deluxe Package. Wow. This is huge. Um, it's a full 38 by 60 inch play area table. Um, it's going to have 
the full table with four sets of four cup holders. You're going to have two of the wine goblet holders, so you can drink your champagne when you play. Oh, oh does that mean I'm going to win? It's possible. Because I you, you am the champion. There's a way for you to enter, but then there's also one of the double component trays that we just showed you and a thematic game mat, one of the game topper game mats. That's going to be available to win. And all you need to do is go to one of these publishers' booth and play a game on there. You're going to get a card right there that has a QR code that will bring you right to the Game Toppers Kickstarter video. It's just a two-minute video, and you can say where you played the game at, and all we need you to do is log in your email address and sign up for that newsletter, and you're there. <laughs> yeah, so I can't win. I'm not going, so I won't be able to play a game on the table. Well, stay with me. Stay with me. Okay. Uh, There's more. We're, sure. we're doing a lot of shilling here, but stay with me. <laughs> Um, there's going to be a way if you can't go to Gen Con where you can still enter this contest. So this is going to be a big dog, awesome contest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can find it at Yellow at their booth at Gen Con. And Yellow Games is going to be featuring a couple big hit games, Bunny Kingdom, Mountains of Madness, and Arena for the Gods. Yeah, baby. So that's going to be fantastic, and you can demo those games in luxury on a game topper. You can also go to the CGE, Check Games Room, and they're going to be demoing code names, duet, and all kinds of their fun games. And uh, likewise, you can get an entry there. Um, Arcane Wonders, our sponsor, is going to be demoing the Sheriff of Nottingham expansion, Merry Men, and a little birdie has told me, that the good sheriff of Nottingham is going to make a reprisal roll on Saturday from 11 o'clock until 3 o'clock at the Arcane Wonders booth. <laughs> <laughs> so come and meet the sheriff, take a picture, play the Merry Men expansion on a game topper, get an entry to win. They'll also be demoing Viral and Spoils of War. In addition... Academy Games. We've known and come to love and know Academy Games. Uva Eichert and Gunther and their, their whole team will be there, and they're going to be demoing their new uh, Vikings 878. Uh, it's fresh off of Kickstarter. Fantastic games that they make, and they have a couple tables in their booth that you'll be able to demo on as well. Um, my good friend Shane Myerskoff from Gray Fox Games they're going to be demoing uh, the Gilded Compass. They're going to be demoing the new Champions of Midgard expansion. So that's another opportunity at Gray Fox Games. Portal Games, our friend Ignacy Chevichek. He's going to be demoing their hit. This has gotten a lot of buzz. People who love Robinson Crusoe, but they like Mars. First Martians, baby. Super cool. Uh, so at Portal Games, you'll be able to demo first Martians. And then we have IDW. And this one, this one really kind of kind of, yeah, and the list goes on and on. I know. I'm gonna I'm I'm trying to move as fast as I can. I hope I'm not boring people. But I, I really want to do justice to these companies too. You know, these companies, they they uh, you know, they've put an investment in me saying, I trust you that you're gonna help me present our games in class. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I want their boost to shine. I want that, you know, they've been gracious enough to work with me. Um, but this ultimately benefits the consumer because they're going to be they're going to be coming in there and they're going to have a blast playing on this table. I had one guy at Dice Tower Con. He's playing on the table at the Gray Fox booth. And I did this little quick. Um, <laughs> thanks, sir. Jobs. That's thanks. I know I'm fasting. I'm going so fast because I'm so excited, but I, I, I hate to drone on. Um, this guy is playing at the Gray Fox booth, and I did this little video, okay, um, just getting first reactions. And he goes, you know, I've been playing games all day, and my back has been bothering me. But after I put my hands up on the rails, because these, these game toppers raise your arms about three and a half inches, just, just bend over on a table once and then straighten up three and a half inches and put your arms resting. 
totally takes the stress off your back. He goes, my back doesn't hurt anymore. So they're not Peter Dinklage friendly tables. They're they're who? Peter <laughs> <laughs> Brew? Peter <laughs> Dinklage? <laughs> have you have you got have you got like um, a holder for your horn so Vikings can play at the table as well? Ah, uh, you can put it on the rail. Yeah, it's it's off the rails. It's off the rails. <laughs> So anyway, the the these uh, publishers when when we were at Dice Tower Con was where we really got to test these babies out, and people walk by these tables and they go, "Oh, these are way better than we thought." Um, they had heard some people had heard about them and things like that, but they were like, "These are these are amazing." I mean, people would I mean, it was easy to get people to demo your game because they they saw the table and they wanted to play on it. Mm. You know, so that was really cool. And that's what we're hoping to do at Gen Con with all these fine publishers is is give them a booth that just sings and give the customers just this experience. And ultimately, that's what this is all about, isn't it? Yeah. Gaming yeah, is a. Yeah. If your, ta if your table can sing Queen songs all day, I will play at that table all day. So will my daughter. You record some. We'll get an app and we'll put a button into the <laughs> rail or something. <laughs> How about just have a cell phone on the component tray? Would that work? Yeah, that would work, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, actually, really, you just get like miniature Freddie Mercury, you know, a bit like this. Hologram. Know, little yeah, hologram. hologram. You stick him on the table like that and go, no, That's Babylon We five. are the champions. No, I'm the champion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so IDW is another company that is going to be having game toppers and give you a chance to win the game. And they are demoing the new game, and I'm really excited about this one, Planet of the Apes. This is designed by Richard Launius. So yeah. you're going to see that there. And they have uh, Daryl Andrews, you know, a fantastic designer in his own right. He's going to have some of his games there and that type of thing. Uh, another company that is really up and coming, and I think – this company is really great. I love this guy. Clay Ross owns Capstone Games. And they've just been knocking it out of the park with Arkwright, uh, with uh, uh, Haspel Connect, uh, that game. And they are going to be demoing their new expansion for that, the Ruhr Valley. Uh, they also are going to have Three Kingdoms Redo available and Climbers. And Climbers is getting a ton of buzz. So uh, Capstone Games, really up and coming. I think you'll want to check that out. And then my good friends at May Day Games, uh, Seth Hyatt and, and Ryan Bruns. These guys are gems. I love these guys. Uh, they are doing a new game called Macroscope. We were just talking about this last night on the Alaboom. Uh, Lance Meister, I haven't played it yet, but Lance says that game is just fun. So that game is going to be at, at, at May Day Games booth. And then Queen Games has one of our game toppers as well. And what are they going to be demoing? Uh, we will rock you. Yeah, the, yeah. We are the immortals, my friend. <laughs> They'll be doing immortals. And uh, what's great about the game toppers, they're large enough uh, that you can play most any size game. And immortals takes up a big footprint, and it looks beautiful on that game topper. Uh, we also have Eagle Griffin Games, and they're going to be demoing Lisboa. And uh, what's really exciting is, in addition to that, we have some people who aren't necessarily publishers, but they're involved in this, uh, either by way of uh, purchasing some of the tables or that they're helping me with some of the marketing. And I am really excited about this. Uh, Scott Alden called me and says, Hey, Berkey, is this is this your deal? And I said, yeah. He said, Are, this is brilliant. This is awesome. We want in. <laughs> um, and he started talking to me. He said, we'd like to have these at the hot games room uh, that Board Game Geek puts on for uh, Gen Con. And that's over at the Hyatt Hotel. In addition to that, he wants to put them on the Board Game Geek TV. Cool. <laughs> So That's, you're going to see game toppers on Board Game Geek TV. Yeah, that will that will make everybody go, 
Wow, Lincoln, you look sexy. His hair will be underneath the table then, won't it? Because if it's raised, his hair will be lower. <laughs> to the rail. Actually, to Lincoln the rail. was the one that had, had mentioned it to Scott, and he says, you got to check these things out. And so I had a talk with Scott and Lincoln and talked about the opportunities that we could use Game Toppers to help upgrade their presentation and, and all of that as well. And even maybe at Board Game Geek Con, BGG Con, in November, so if you happen to see a game topper at the Board Game Geek Hot Games Room or on Board Game Geek TV, that can help you with an entry. Mm. In, in addition, my good friend Jamie Keggy from the Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast. We have a lot of podcasting friends. Blue Peg, Pink Peg, oh, that's Rolling no Dice. What? That's no secret. That's no secret. Love Blue Peg, Pink Peg. Uh, they've been one of my favorite podcasts from the very beginning. The Secret Cabal, likewise, I've listened to them for many years, way before I had this idea. They've always been one that uh, has been one of my favorites. Uh, Marty and Tony from Rolling Dice and Taking Names, likewise. They're, they're not just quality podcasters. These are people that I really, really like. Uh, the Dukes of Dice are going to be helping us with some things. But particularly... For Gen Con, the Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast is having their Saturday night meetup at the Tow Yard. Um, it's going to be an amazing thing. They're expecting a thousand. The Tow Yard shuts the whole place down for them. They even had a beer that was named after them. It's called Full Froth. So if you're a Cabalist and you listen to the Cabal, you know when they are jumping out of their pants and when they go full froth, you know, when they're really excited about a game. Um, well, they've got a beer named after them. Anyway, this meetup is going to be a great thing. Jamie and them gather together games from all these fine publishers and have this huge raffle. It's always a big hit, and Game Toppers is going to be a part of that. We're going to have a game table there that people can demo some different games that they're going to do. In addition to that, we're going to have some thematic game mats that we're going to be giving away and a special... It, um, exclusive secret cabal gaming map. So if you're a cabalist, you're going to be pretty excited about that. And that's going to happen Saturday night, 8 o'clock at the tow yard at the secret cabal meetup. But that will give you an opportunity to log in. We'll have cards available where you can take that card, scan the QRC code, and enter to win this uh, contest. And last but not least, He's froze. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic effect. Hey, Sir Job said I could take my time. So, yeah. Okay. If what if you're a Gen Cantor? Yes. And you can't go to Gen Con, right? Is there an opportunity for you to get involved in this? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. The question, the answer is yes. We have a friendship and connection with the board game group on Facebook. I've been good friends of Larry Cruz and Brian and all these guys that started the board game group back when we, we, we only had 500 users and we're like, does anybody care? And now it's like 23,000 people joined the board game group. It's such a fantastic place. It's, it's in my opinion, one of the friendliest Facebook groups. Um, I, I love these guys. None, nonetheless, we are going to have a banner on the board game group page from the 14th through the 20th. It's going to list all these fine publishers so that you can actually check out these publishers. But there is a link um, through that giveaway that if you're a user, a board game group member, you can actually go in and get an entry for this Scotland Yard game topper package. Wow. I have just said a whole lot of stuff. I did, did, did. Burger with egg and gherkins. <laughs> I did, did, did. So, long and short of it, you have an opportunity to win a full game topper system with accessories. This Scotland Yard Deluxe Package is going to be fantastic. Um, and I'd really encourage you, if you are going to Gen Con, go check out these publishers. Um, play their games. Go say, hey, you know, I want to play on that game topper. And uh, 
you'll be able to get a card from them. That'll help you get entry in. And, uh, you know, I would sure appreciate, you know, this is a dream. Um, I've spent a lot of, uh, I've, I've scraped together every nickel I had and a bunch of nickels I didn't have. Um, <laughs> you didn't find those in the toilets on the way back from no, the last No, I there. wish I would have. And, and, and the truth is it's a whole lot more than nickels. Uh, in order for me to honor my word and, and do this right, I just felt like I had to have my proof of concept. And I needed to have this designed where I physically touched the actual product so we went through some of the patent pending process. We went through the engineering process. And actually, I paid to buy 60 of these tables, which are costing me a fortune, way more than what when we, when we go to Kickstarter and can do some volume. Um, but I wanted to make sure they were right. I wanted to make sure they did what I said they do. And they, I, it brought a tear to my eye when I saw them. They were so beautiful. Mm. Um, it's, it's really a dream come true. And we're, it's all happening right now. Uh, but we would really appreciate any help you could give us to share the word. Uh, if you could help us tell people about, hey, there's this new thing, and maybe this is an option you can look at. And we're not trying to take anything away from all the other fine table companies that are out there. They do a great job, and I love those experiences. This just fits a, a certain kind of a niche, I think, for a lot of people. And uh, it would really help us out if you would share that on Facebook at Game Toppers LLC or Twitter, Game Toppers LLC, uh, or on our website is GameToppersLLC.com. And you can see what people are saying about it. You'll get all the information you want. Oh, oh Geek Sheet there's just closed. Oh, there you go. Well done. That's <laughs> yeah, it's very courageous of you, Berkey, to, 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 to do this venture, to, to create this, what looks like a very, very high quality, excellent table. Um, I, I got my cocktail games tablecloth. I'm quite happy with that at the moment. You don't have to send me anything. Honestly, you don't have to send me anything. I know you want to. I know you I want, do to. want to. I want to really bad. Um, if this thing, uh, if this thing sings and we can get some traction, um, you know, if we only sell a few hundred tables, it, it's going to be, it, you know, it'll it'll be worth doing. But, you know, hopefully we can sell a thousand of these tables, maybe yeah. 2,000 of these tables. And if we can do that, I think we can do something really great in this hobby. I really want to give back to the community. And you'd be, you'd be top on the list, brother. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I think after Gen Con, there's going to be a lot of buzz about your product. And I think Game Toppers is going to be, you know, one of those things that people are going to say, where did you get this table from? And it's going to be a case of wait for the Kickstarter and it's going to be other publishers coming past and going, wow, why is their table so much better than ours? And they'll be going, damn, I should have taken Berkey up on his, on his uh, order. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And, and, and the truth is I just, I, I, I connected with a lot of these publishers that I had relationships with people that I knew and trusted and, and that I felt were really quality companies because I want to associate with that. I'm going to do what I say. I want to provide quality, um, all of those kind of things that I believe in business. So I'm trying to partner with those those type of companies. And honestly, I just don't know everybody, and I couldn't get around to everybody. Um, it's just been fast and furious getting this launched the way it is. Um, but I'm so excited. And I'd be really remiss if I didn't say something else. You're seeing one of the toppers there. That's yeah. our little mini table. That's the 36 by 36. And that's perfect for X-Wing. They're demoing viral on that right now. We're calling that the Lestrade. And <laughs> that Picard. table, yeah, it's, that's the Lestrade. We're going to have the Watson, and we're going to have the Baker Street. <gasps> and so we actually one. have... We actually have four different sizes. It's going to be cool. The Baker Street is the 36 by 72, the full six-footer. So okay. working, working really hard on getting our shipping costs very affordable and working with a lot of people to make that happen. In addition to that, uh, any of our full tables, you can buy an accessory rail and turn it into one of those minis, yeah. which is really cool. So you can have a two-for-one. But what I was going to say that I would be remiss if I didn't say my good friend, Jesse Shakey from Fergus Falls, he's uh, become a really dear friend of mine. 
Jesse, I know you're online. He says, I've seen these tops with my own eyes and they are absolutely amazing. I remember when we first brought the prototype out and he was kind of meh on the idea. And then he actually played on my prototype and he goes, I didn't realize how awesome this was. <laughs> and that was before we got all the, the cool rail system and everything. Um, but after he played on, he goes, this is so much better. And, mm -hmm. and Jesse, he's a craftsman in his own right. He's built portable table for his uh, cousin and he, he's a craftsman. He, the guy's multi-talented. But Jesse is actually coming to Gen Con with me. You're gonna see us in our top hats. We're gonna be all over the gaming hall. Uh, so we'd love to meet you if you're there and uh, love to hang out with you and uh, Definitely be willing to show you anything about game toppers. We can too. Is there an estimated ETA for the Kickstarter or? Roughly Good question. Uh, we are looking to uh, launch in the middle of September and as long as all of my my numbers come together the way I need them to um, by then I think we're going to be good to go. My manufacturing is really great. We've got a great partner, and I feel very confident about that. And I'm just making sure that all of our shipping is in line so that I can bring these two people very affordably. Yeah, so hopefully, Cool Me or Not won't bring out a Kickstart in September, because otherwise, <laughs> they will sap all your Sip money. Siphon off 100 bucks here and 100 bucks there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, one person told me this, though. This is kind of cool. He said, you know, with a game topper, every game is upgraded. Yeah. It's like buying an upgrade for every game. Well, you think about how much money we spend on games. Why not have a table that actually takes every game up a notch? Yeah. An accessory which does, does justice to everything that you, you touch. I agree with you. I, I, I look forward to the day of just having not have a cup in the way. It's like last night I was playing Zaya, three player game of Zaya. We filled the table, but we had like a box of biscuits on the table as well as three cups of coffee and tea. And we just had no room. You know, we, just, we were scared to roll dice because we we're going to knock something over. So, yeah, it looks great. And again, not scared to have dice fall off the table. Get a dice yeah. Tower. Yeah, we actually Ben is actually engineering a dice tower right now that fits inside of actually sits on top of the rail and oh, it goes I... down and rolls the dice right out into the vault. It sounds like a bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I saw the first his first run at it and so we're going to have some super cool stuff then. That that's going to just keep evolving and be okay. awesome. Okay, so this one hour episode that we plan to do is turned into two hours and <laughs> yeah. Babble, 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 We've babble. We've been babbling and uh, should we sum this up then? Well, I'm just so grateful. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me talk about this project, this passion project uh, called Game Toppers. Uh, join us at GameToppersLLC.com and you'll see all the updates coming to Kickstarter in September. Uh, we also want to thank all these publishers, Yellow, uh, CGE, Arcane Wonders, Academy Games, Gray Fox Games, Portal Games, IDW, Capstone Games, Mayday Games, Queen Games, Eagle Griffin, the Board Game Geek, uh, uh, or, or Board Game Geek, and uh, the Secret Cabal, and the Board Game Group. We want to thank everybody and everybody else, the podcasters that are going to be helping me, Blue Peg, Pink Peg, uh, uh, rolling dice and taking names, the Dukes of Dice, and all, all of my other friends, Robert Oren, um, and there's the, the Board Game Corner, and there's going to be a whole bunch of people that are going to be talking about this thing. I just want to thank everybody so much for the super kind support. Uh, it means the world to me, and, and uh, that's about all I can say about all that. And we really want to thank our sponsor, Arcane Wonders, for helping us out, bring the show, help pay for some of our costs for hosting and these kind of things. And and Barry, I'd love to thank you, too, for all the work you do on this show. You make this thing happen. Do I? That's very yes. good you. I thought it was you that made it happen. No. Uh, no, I drag it down. You make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So what we need to do now is say thank you to everyone for tuning in and joining in the conversation. Don't forget that this will be mixed down into an audio version later on, hopefully this week, maybe next week. 
but definitely before Gen Con. Con, Con. Don't Coming forget, soon. Don't forget you can download the Seventh Continent soundtrack by The Balance of Power, not by Barry Badger Doublet, but by The Balance of Power. You can download it and use it for your games. It doesn't have to Where be can they content. get that? They can get it from uh, la, 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 CD Baby, or they can get it from the Seventh Continent, or they can get it from thin air from the internet. <laughs> Board games, everybody should. Uh, yes. Tom. There you have it. So all that remains for us to do is to say thank you very much again. I keep saying that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you for sharing with us your wonderful project. And I look forward to hearing some good things back from Gen Con, uh, where they, they interview the table and not the actual game player or the yeah, the, the talking table. Yeah, the talking table. No, you're <laughs> playing the game wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, thanks again. Send us on out. Okie dokie. I've got no graphic ready. <laughs> We're so glad we had this time together. And now it's time to go. Here it is. It won't be long until we have another show. So keep us in mind. Get online. Berkey and Badger will be back in no time.